All right, let's jump into the news real quick. We're going to dive into a few things here today. But uh, yeah, most importantly, where is Bitcoin bottoming? Should we expect a bull market very, very soon? Uh, and also uh, all of the trades that I'm going to be looking for here today as well. Let's jump straight in. Looking at the inflation rate rose. The core inflation rose 0.3% here. Uh, this is actually not really significant at all. This is not a big percentage move, okay? The news will obviously exaggerate it, as they have done with everything uh, over the past decade. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can see here that, yes, uh, it's it's something that's affecting the market a little bit, but nothing crazy, right? Overall markets are up. Look at this thing. So we is banging it 15%. We love to see it. We love to see it. Uh, besides that, yeah, I mean, this is obviously bullish. Fear and greed is, um, hmm, it's, it's okay. It's a bit better. All right. It was better yesterday. Now it's at 31. This is something that, uh, yeah, if it does want to reverse, these are the levels you want fear and greed to be at. Okay. Uh, moving to ETFs. We have seen uh, interesting weeks so far. We saw 28 in. We saw 117 in, in terms of millions of dollars, right? And then 43 out. This is okay. I would say it's more neutral. Uh, gives uh, these institutions a bit more confidence, of course. But if we do look back in time here, uh, we can see disgusting. Sorry about this glitch as well. This extension is terrible for making things dark. But uh, yeah, we can see lots of outflows. It's super bearish. But a little bit of inflows here is something that's a little bit better, I would say. Okay, so it's more neutral here today. Uh, this is the main point of the video here. Production cost, right? So you can see this on your screen right now. I do want to highlight something that's super important here. Uh, first of all, we talk about this every time but there's something else for this chart I want to talk about as well okay so every time we talk about this electrical cost baseline this is usually where Bitcoin bottoms Bitcoin does usually not go below this line ever okay we, if we go back in history see the black line see the red line we don't go below it all right we actually just bottom around this line every single time okay so uh, if we do get down to 43,200 on a major crashing scenario that is that is where we buy, okay? That is where we buy. Uh, besides that, I want to bring your attention to this more pale line here. This pale line is super important. Bitcoin loves to oscillate around this line. And if you are just someone that likes to make decent amounts per year and you're an investor, just basically run a grid strategy around this line. This line is your mean point, your median point, okay? The middle point uh, in which you should be selling Bitcoin at or uh, buying it back if you've shorted. Uh, and as you can see here, if we do go back through the entirety of the history, this is the line, all right? It's a very profitable strategy to use this line as your oscillation point, the middle point, right? You can see here uh, over the past kind of run, as you can see, right, this is the area we do often pull back to and the area we do oscillate around uh, even right now here you can see if we do zoom in oh this is not going to look great but yeah you can see here we have oscillated around this line uh, pretty strongly okay and we have done this uh, in previous cycles and pretty much throughout the entirety of bitcoin's history so yeah keep an eye on that one if you did want to set up a grid bot this is the this is really the time to do it as well as we've talked about if we did get down back down to this level we said this a few weeks ago right if we did get back down to this level you want to be setting up a grid bot we'll get into this in a minute of course but but you want to be setting up a grid bot. You want to be using this line as your point uh, of selling and closing positions uh, more than anything. Okay. Uh, besides that, we are seeing electricity consumption come down. We are seeing hash rate come down. Uh, this is something that's quite bearish. Could spell for a capitulation event. Obviously, it's September. Uh, a lot of these uh, institutions and big whales love to sell around September to book losses. All right. Uh, in which they don't have to pay tax. Okay. They don't have to pay tax. And then, uh, yeah, they, they move forward from there and then buy back in October and November. Okay, a liquidation heat map. Let's just give this a little refresh here. Actually, let's bring it to a three day. That's where it matters. We can see here uh, big beefy lines around 57.3. This would be a key area to be targeting here. Uh, we will talk about potential shorts down to this in a minute. But as of right now, uh, yeah, the range would be between that kind of 58.5 zone and uh, maybe even as low as 55.4 here. So we're not seeing too much uh, in the middle of this zone. So yeah, a bit of a, a gap here that where we could get a potential massive sell-off back down to these levels so just be aware of that but overall yeah i would say pretty neutral right now it's mainly just a trap zone right now until we come up with a better pattern as we'll talk about in a minute we will be putting out signals here today uh, on the on the patreon okay i have been putting these on youtube as well let me know if you agree with that or you find it annoying just let me know in the comments okay i'm here for you at the end of the day uh, if you did want these one minute updates 
than they are on Patreon anyway if I don't decide to put them on YouTube, but uh, we have been putting them on YouTube uh, over the past few days, just to kind of experiment, all right? Uh, let's jump in to the long term. <laughs> All right, long term for Bitcoin, we can see here we are still inside this ginormous yellow range that we have plotted out on the chart right now. Previous videos, I think even the last video I put out, I said, hey, if we do get to these 58 zones, be careful of this uh, potentially uh, bringing in that inverse parabolic curve, which is essentially this curve down. Okay. Uh, I, I I mean, I'm, I'm okay with this getting to 60K. At this point, I wasn't expecting to get up here this steep, but really, it's really along this line here, right? So you can see this white line. We're looking to just essentially get wherever it, however long it takes, right? As soon as we hit this kind of parallel line structure, we'll look for that inverse parabolic curve to carry on towards the downside, okay? And as long as we are in this downtrend, we have to be in a non-biased state saying, yes, uh, we should be looking for shorts uh, around those spots, okay? And parabolic curves, you, you guys know this, right? They are probably the best indicators of a trend, all right? So we can see here with Bitcoin, the parabolic curve, when we got out of that parabolic curve, we started a different trend, whether it's sideways or down. Okay, and this, this can be uh, on, on all markets and all directions as well, right? So we can see here, the inverse parabolic curve, uh, similar to the one we're looking at right now. All right, so until we do break over that inverse parabolic curve structure, right, so these three lines here, then uh, yeah, it's something that we should be expecting to carry on. Uh, and from that point, as my chart just completely spazzes out, <laughs> we can see uh, that, yeah, we are targeting roughly just under 60K at the moment if we were to head up here today uh, for that. If we do head down here, I would just expect sideways until we do hit whatever uh, kind of line structure will be there. And you know what I'm actually gonna do here, guys? I'm actually gonna copy and paste this one, use it as some sort of trap zone uh, and just have that uh, there because we're not expecting to hit this line. If we hit this line is actually fairly bullish. It's more progressive. Okay, but I'm expecting to, to hit just below it. All right, just below it and then come back down. So we'll see how this kind of uh, this propagates and, and this 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 comes into fruition. But what we will say is uh, we're not really close to that area as of right now. So we can go in either direction. Um, what I will say is if we do want to have a little long opportunity here, this won't be in, in any measure moves or anything like that. We've just played out this measure move on a wedge structure. Okay, so yes, we are expecting sideways. But if we do break this high here today, it's plausible if we are looking at momentum and we've got a wick like this, right, we should be expecting to absorb that wick towards the other side. Okay. Uh, and that wick towards the other side could lead us to roughly like a 1% trade here towards the upside. Yeah, so like a 1% trade here coming through absorbing this wick uh, as, uh, as buy pressure absorbs into sell pressure. A lot of the time here in Bitcoin land, you can see a similar thing happened here. Okay, you can see a similar thing happen here. All right, so uh, yeah, this is, this is something that uh, you shouldn't really be ignoring. It doesn't happen all of the time, but uh, when we are in sideways markets like so, you can expect that quite a lot. All right, so if we do break this high here today at 58.5, then I will be targeting a long for 1% upwards, but we'll get to that in the midterm and the short term. Actually, let uh, but actually before we do that, let's let's uh, take a look at this right now. Hash rate, we did mention this earlier. We're looking at hash rate right now. Uh, hash rate is currently below the moving averages. This is a bearish sign, but uh, unless we're under there for multiple days, as you can see, we love to oscillate around it. But unless we're under there for multiple days, like we see we were here uh, and here, right, when it was red, uh, then uh, it's not something to worry about too much, right? I would just say recently, hash rate has made all-time highs, okay? Uh, and yeah, I mean, it does oscillate around these lines but what's more important is uh, if we are above these lines more than we are below these lines then uh, it's more bullish because it means the moving averages will be heading up okay and when these moving averages are heading up if you can see the signals on the charts here guys obviously the long signal we are still building this position right but uh, if we look at previous long signals here we can see boom okay that's that's a massive massive percentage gain okay we're talking about 100 percent there on that trade okay we're talking about uh what's this one what is this one? 44%. Very, very nice. Obviously, this is in a bear market, so uh, they're not all going to be fantastic, as you can see. But when we are in that bull market, bull structure, okay, and there's a lot of positive news around, then uh, we can use that as 
uh, one good indicator that we might be heading up here. So yeah, keep an eye on that one. Uh, if we can keep that hash rate up and we can avoid that bearish crush on the hash rate, then it's incredibly bullish and we should be building a position as I am doing right now. Uh, if it does cross towards the downside, we should be looking to hedge that position, find a short, okay, make sure we're not losing money as it goes down. And then uh, we just buy back a lower, okay, and then uh, build our position from that point with a lower and lower entry, okay? Let's move on to the midterm. Midterm here, very, very simple, okay? I'm not gonna waste your time. As I said, we have been playing out this wedge structure. Uh, that is now complete. We do have a little bit of a, a trend line structure here as well. Let's actually just get rid of this so it's a little easier to see. Uh, we can see that, yes, we do have this trend line structure coming through. If we do lose that, there may be a short here down, but it's incredibly risky. I would not target more than 1% on this short, and there's just a lot of things in the way that can block us on this thing. So not the, not the most fantastic trade, but if you you have to take a trade that is probably the one i would look for we've also got these li liquidity levels here uh, that we can target uh, that the the market makers will be looking to absolutely destroy okay towards the upside though if we do as we talked about here on the daily right if we do break this high at any point here today we will be looking to bang this up for one percent okay uh, and we won't even be out of the range so it's still a plausible target where if they want to they can make a, a lower high and bring this down afterwards but yes we are above this trend line okay if we can get a above the volume weighted ATR bands, then we should be expecting a move up here to continue that, okay? If we do want to go up a bit higher, then we do have this 10X liquidation level. We do have uh, this 10X liquidation level as well. And we have one up here near that four hour volume weighted ATR band. So it depends really how high they wanna take this. I don't expect it to go really above 60K. So this is really where we're targeting. But um, besides that, yeah, that's the trade that I'm looking for on the midterm. Let's jump in to the DGEN zone. DGEN zone here, we can see that we have just come off of that 60 minute and 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. Uh, again, if we do break that structure, uh, the, the bigger structure here that we can see, uh, which is this one, then uh, yeah, I mean, there might be some trades towards the downside, but incredibly risky. Again, DGEN zone is, is really just for you gamblers out there, okay? Uh, so if, if you did want to take this trade, then uh, I mean, this is okay if we break this low, but again, probably 50, 60% success rate, so manage your risk accordingly, okay? Don't expect this and don't bet the farm on this one, all right? Uh, and then besides that, again, we are just still looking for that trade, as we've seen on every time frame. We're looking for this trade up essentially here, right? So 1.2%, something like this, up to these next levels, not breaking the highs, but violating inside this zone a little bit. Uh, and then there will be actually a trade, which we'll probably do tomorrow for a signal, but if we do get above this area and we do get that trade, as soon as we lose this 50 minute volume weighted ATR band. It's usually a fantastic sign for a short. So we will be targeting that uh, in which we can make copious amounts of cash. Okay, that is going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. I will see you in the next video. Please, please, please give it a like. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of all of this news and all of this stuff and uh, all of these trades. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.